humbly accepting correction is exactly where you need to be in your walk with God. Hi friends, welcome back. We are gonna be talking about more of a niche subject today, a smaller subject. Maybe that's not talked about as much in the Christian faith, but I think is really important for us to understand. And I think it can really start to unravel other things in our life and help us see God's heart about different things and honestly bring a lot of freedom because it brought a lot of freedom into my life when I truly saw and understood God's heart behind judgment. That's what we're talking about. Judge, judging, judgment, words that are thrown around a lot by Christians and non-Christians alike. How can you judge me for this? Or are you judging me for this? Or you can't judge me? Or whatever it may be. Or non-Christians being like, well, how can you tell me X, Y, and Z? Aren't you supposed to not judge? You're a Christian. All of these things. And a lot of times it bec it's like this defense mechanism, but the Bible does have a lot to say about judgment and about how to judge rightly or when we're supposed to judge, or if we're supposed to judge at all. So we're gonna be talking about all of those things. I think to start off, there's a really important distinction we need to make between the judgment of God and any sort of judgment that we could possibly have. That immediately kind of puts things in perspective. When we think about God, well, he, he is God. He is all knowing, all present. And so he knows everything. He sees everything. He doesn't just see stuff, but he knows every single one of our thoughts. He knows our heart. He knows the things that we dwell on. He knows everything about every single one of us, which might be a little bit scary to some of you or to some people, but it's really a beautiful thing because we are fully known by God. There's beauty and peace to be found in the fact that honestly, a lot of us feel misunderstood and chances are you are misunderstood. Uh, I think every single one of us is misunderstood because no one else in the world has been in our shoes. No one else in the world has gone through and seen and experienced the life that we have except for God. He has been there all along. He knows everything you've been through, every thought you've had in every situation. He knows exactly where your mind goes. He knows your habits, your good and your bad. He knows everything about you. And there's beauty to know that there is somebody out there who knows you fully, completely inside and out. And so when we're talking about judgment, there's a good distinction to make between God's judgment and our judgment. When God is judging, God is judging perfectly because he's God. He knows everything. He is correct and he doesn't lie. And so no judgment he makes could possibly be wrong because he knows everything <laughs> and he is good. And so he makes correct judgments. He knows the things that are in the past. He's outside of space and time. He's all present. He's in everyone's lives. And so when God says, this is wrong for you, you shouldn't do this. Maybe don't do that. Mm, you really should not do that. We can trust. Okay, I'm just going to trust that Jesus knows what he's talking about, that God knows what he's talking about. And I'm going to not do the things he tells me not to do. And I'm going to do the things he tells me to do. Because if he's God and I'm not, then he's right and I'm not. And so we take on this like sense of humility, this when we view God rightly, we view him in his all-powerful person that he is. And we say, when you say something, it's correct, regardless of what I could possibly think. Because I can think I'm right, but I only know very little. I know very, very little. Like, there's billions of people in the world. And I really just know what's going on in my life and the people around me's life to a degree. And to be honest, most of the time, I don't even really know what's going on in my life. And so... I really can't trust myself in my understanding because I really don't know a lot of what's going on around here on earth, but he does, praise God. And so we can trust him and trust his judgment. But what about us? The Bible calls us not to judge. That's true. Jesus often would tell people, with the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. With the judgment that you make, it will be judged back to you. And Jesus said that, um, why would you notice the speck in your brother's eye, but then ignore the log in your own? Talking about judging. And so there's so many times throughout the Bible that Jesus talks about judgment and you can look up the scriptures and you can find those specific stories and examples that I had just mentioned, among many others where Jesus talks about judgment, like the story where he says, whoever hasn't sinned cast the first stone. And all these people who are judging this prostitute walk away because they're so fixated on this one person and their sin that they don't even recognize, oh, wait, we also have sinned. And it might not be in that way, but we have sinned in, 
a way and we're just as guilty as this woman. And so Jesus says, cast the first stone and to whoever can say that they are without sin and none of them can do it. And so there's tons of stories. We hear about judgment all of the time, but there's still this thing that goes around with Christians where we like to make judgments about certain things. We like to say, well, I'm viewing this situation or this person or this whatever it is, and I'm making a judgment based on my understanding of this situation. And this is where things can kind of get messy sometimes. And this is where the word, are you judging me? Cast the first stone, whatever gets thrown around. And we start to really lose sight of where are we called to have judgment in our own lives? And where are we called to not make judgments? And how are we called to make judgments? We're gonna read John chapter seven, starting in verse 14, going all the way down to verse 24. So this is a big section of scripture, but I think that it's a really good one to really read and to understand what's going on in the story. This is explaining the life, uh, a story of the life of Jesus. So something that happened when Jesus was alive on earth this is in the Gospel of John, and it says, starting with verse 14, About the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began teaching. The Jews therefore marveled, saying, How is it that this man has learning when he has never studied? So Jesus answered them, My teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone's will is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I'm the one speaking on my own authority. The one who speaks on his own authority seeks his own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and in him there is no falsehood. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered them, I did one work, and you all marvel at it. Moses gave you circumcision. Not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If on the Sabbath a man receives circumcision, so that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because on the Sabbath I made a man's whole body well? Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. And so... It's really this last scripture, this last verse that I want to hone in on. It says, do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. And so when we're called to not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment, as the Bible calls us to do, what is the context of the story? Well, the context is um, Jesus teaching and everyone marveling at him and being like, who is this man? And how does he know this stuff? Like, he sounds like he really knows what's going on. He kind of knows some things. And Jesus is like, yeah, I do. Um, but he's like, why are you trying to kill me? And then um, the people are like, who's seeking to kill you? And then Jesus is like, I do one miracle on the Sabbath and you're trying to kill me because I'm breaking the Sabbath rules. So in the time in the Jewish culture, a Sabbath is a day of rest. It was actually a command given from God is something that God actually gave uh, the Israelites, which are his chosen people, back in the Old Testament days. And so um, this was before Jesus came and he was like, here's this commandment to Sabbath to take a day of rest. And so the Jews, you know, took this up. This was the way that they lived. And now even to this day, when Jesus came, they still obeyed the Sabbath, but they still circumcised on the Sabbath, which was another commandment of God. People were called to be circumcised and kind of be um, brought into this covenant with God. And so they still would circumcise on the Sabbath. But Jesus is pointing out the fact, I healed someone on the Sabbath. And how is that wrong? But circumcising someone on the Sabbath isn't. They're both doing a work. And then he ends up by saying, do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. And so his point he's kind of making is, you want to kill me and you want to end my life even though you're literally just marveling at how great of a teacher i am but at the same time that you're doing that you want to end my life in your own judgment because you think that me healing somebody on the sabbath is disobeying the law of god but in your own eyes you circumcising someone on the Sabbath, doing just a different kind of work is okay. And he's kind of pointing out, you are not supposed to judge in your own judgment, but judge with correct judgment. Where does correct judgment come from? God. Jesus, being God, 
kind of knew what was correct and what was right. And these people were so quick to get angry and to hate Jesus. And ultimately it ended in Jesus's life being taken from him because of the anger of these people, which was the plan, but it was led and cultivated by this anger of these people who didn't understand that Jesus was God and Jesus was the chosen Messiah to come save them. But in their own judgment, they didn't understand that. And so they killed the Messiah that they had been waiting for because they tried to judge in their own judgment. So that's what we're not called to do. And it's so clear in the story that when it comes to judgment, this is the father's heart. Do not judge in your own understanding because you're not God, but judge with God's understanding. And that's when you can judge because he doesn't say, just don't make any judgments. No, he says, judge with right judgment. He wants us to judge because to judge just kind of means to uh, make a decision in your mind, like to understand something, to I judge this blank. I judge this blank. This is how I'm seeing the situation. This is how I'm viewing this person or viewing what they're doing. Like, this is what I believe it is. And so when we're judging in our own understanding, we're really going to be wrong because we don't know very much. But when we're judging with the judgment of God, we know that it's correct because it's coming from God. And so we actually are, and as we can see in this scripture alone, called to make right judgments, correct judgments, even righteous judgments is my favorite way to, to call the judgments that we're called to make righteously judging, righteous judgments. So what is a righteous judgment? When it comes to people, when it comes to judging people, judging what people are doing. This is often where problems can arise in the Christian faith. We as believers can see another believer or an unbeliever in some sort of sin or something's going on in their life. And we can start to make our own judgments on it, our own dictations of what's going on. Oh, this person is blank. This person thinks blank. Oh, this person's really just blank. And we'll start to make judgments about this person's life, about what this person um, is doing, why they, this, whatever it is. All sorts of different judgments that we can make as people. I mean, we all make them um, all of the time. We're judging people. We're judging what people are doing. We're judging what's going on. But Jesus comes in and says, actually, I don't want you to do that because actually you don't really know what you're talking about. But I do want you to make correct judgments based on what I know, based on what Jesus knows. Some of the things we are called to judge is stuff that Jesus has already set up the answers for us. So when it comes to sin, for example, we're supposed to righteously judge sin. The Bible is full of things that are sins. And so to look at a sin and to say that that's wrong is a really good thing. And we really need to know how to do that. That's judging correctly because who is to say that something's wrong? God. And he does. It's all in the Bible. There's tons of things in the Bible that the Lord has told us are sins that are wrong, that go against his plan and his design, and that we're called to walk out of, and we're called to live a different lifestyle. And so to look at those things and to recognize those are incorrect is a pretty good thing. We should, we really should do that. That is what we are supposed to do. That is making a right judgment. But the problem comes when other people are involved. And so if someone in your life or there's some situation where you notice a friend or just another brother and sister in Christ or an unbeliever in some sort of sin, how are you called to respond to that? What kind of judgment are you called to make in a situation like that? This is the thing that really set me free when it comes to judgment. And we're talking about people right now, but this has to do with other things too, with situations. But when it comes to people, how are we supposed to judge people when they're living in sin or when they're struggling with a sin or there's something in their life that we know goes against something that God has already said, something that's a right judgment. We need to make a distinction between judging sin and judging people because we are not called to judge the things of a person that we don't know, but we are called to judge the sin. It's good to look at somebody who is sinning and to say that is incorrect that actually keeps us safe from falling into the same sin. If we were just so unaware of sin and what's wrong and what's good and what's bad, then that would be really, really bad for us because we would probably fall into way more sin and do way more 
horrible things if we had no idea what was good and what was bad. But the beautiful thing is that Jesus actually set it up for us and told us what's good and what's bad. So we don't really have to wonder if we know the word, if we read the word, um, we will actually learn what is a right judgment. And so to see in somebody else's life or in a situation, some kind of sin taking place, it is a really good thing to judge the sin in a way where you're like, that is a sin and I don't want to go near that. But the problem can come in when we turn the judgment of a sin, the right judgment of God onto the person. And we start to judge the heart or the reasoning behind that person. Or we start to judge who that person is or so-and-so is committing this sin. Therefore, that must mean that they blink. This is a sin that this person has um, lived in or is doing. Therefore, they must not be blank. Therefore, they must actually blank. And so we start actually turning a right judgment into a personal judgment and judging this person and judging their heart, judging their mind, judging what they truly believe, judging what they truly think, judging their stance with God. But those are all things that we cannot know. We don't know those things. We can know what a person's doing. We can see what a person's doing, but the reasoning behind it, where their heart's at, what they're truly thinking, why they're doing it. Sometimes we start to judge like, well then is that person even saved? Or we start to judge this person's stance with God or this person's stance in their relationship with God or whatever it is based on something that we see in them. But that is so not good because we are not God and we don't know the heart of the person. We don't know the thoughts of the person. We don't know this person's mind so who are we to judge beyond righteous judgment who are we to judge beyond something the bible already tells us now that doesn't mean that those things aren't true that doesn't mean if someone's living in a sin that doesn't mean that those things aren't true they might be you know someone living in um, habitual sin might mean that they're not really a christian in the first place it might mean that they don't love God enough. It might mean that they are selfish or prideful or whatever it is. Like it might mean all these different things about their character, about who they are, uh, but it also might not. <laughs> and so um, to really put that on somebody else and to say, because you did this, it means this. Because I noticed this thing righteously, I'm going to predict that actually also this. It's just not our place. And sometimes it comes out of a place of love. And so when I say like, this has freed me, I get it because there was a time in my life I really struggled with judging people, especially when I came to know the Lord and initially because it honestly came from a place of love, as silly as it sounds. But I just noticed sin, deadly, horrible, bad, bad sin in people's lives that was hurting them and was hurting their relationship with God and it really broke my heart for this person or these people because I didn't want them to keep living a, a life full of bondage and a life full of fear and a life full of less than God's best because I love this person so much. And so righteously, I would judge what they're doing and I would say, well, this is sin. This is not good. This is something that can draw you away from God. But a lot of the times it would turn into me trying to figure out this person's stance or this person's place with God or this person's heart or this person's belief system or anything else about this person beyond just what I see in them. And what it did is it really put the weight of that person on me and it just made me concerned and worried about deeper things of this person that I didn't even have any justifiable reason to believe were true beyond my own assumptions, beyond my, my own understanding. But it wasn't God's understanding. God didn't reveal these things to me about this person. It was just my own judgment beyond the righteous judgment of what this person was doing or what who these people have, were doing. And I remember in this, in this time period, I was so confused because I was like, God, but I love these people. That's why I care about um, their, their stance with you. That's why I care about their heart. That's why I care about their mind. And I did, I really did. Um, but in that caring for those people, I put my judgment in the place of God's judgment. And that's where I went wrong. And I was actually so confused. Like I didn't know, I was like, okay, I, I feel like I'm judging these people probably in a way I'm not supposed to, but how do I care about this person? How do I care about what they're doing, but not judge them in the way I'm not supposed to? That's when righteous judgment came to mind. And I was like, huh, 
yeah, there is a way to judge correctly and a way to judge wrongly. And the Lord began to teach me about what that difference was. And I started to see that for me, the problem was, is I was judging this person's heart and not just the sin. And so we actually are called to judge sin and we're called to judge sin in people. We're called to be able to look at our brother and sister in Christ and to see their sin and to not ignore it, not to not care about it, not to say, oh, that's that's only for God to see, that's only for God to figure out. No, we're called to actually do something about it. But what we're not called to do is to judge them in our own understanding. We're not called to say, oh, because you're sinning, you must not really love God. Oh, because you're sinning, you must not really believe in God. Oh, because you're sinning, you must not really be free in this area, or you must think this, or you must also do this. No, throw all of that away because you're not God and you don't know that person the way God knows that person. But when you do notice sin in someone's life or a situation that has sin around it, right? This is what we're called to do. Galatians 6, one through two says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's what we're called to do. If anyone's caught in a transgression, a sin, you who are spiritual, so it's talking about a fellow believer, a fellow brother, sister in the faith, someone who's spiritual, not just a random person that doesn't even know God. You know, if there's someone in your life trying to make judgments about your life or to tell you or point different things out, but they don't know Jesus, well, don't listen to that because they can't judge at all because they don't even know the one who knows everything. They can't even judge rightly because they don't know the right judgments to make. You who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. We're also seeing here um, this thing saying, keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. That's us making these righteous judgments saying, but be careful because when you notice that transgression in somebody else, you don't want to fall into it as well. So keep that in mind. That's good. Make that judgment. Realize this is sin and I don't want this and I uh, don't want to fall into this as well. So be careful. But when you do notice that in someone else, restore that person with a spirit of gentleness. Just talk to them. <laughs> talk to your brother and sister of Christ in a righteous judgment way. That's how you're going to notice a shift. There is this thing. There is problems when brothers or sisters go to one another and their righteous judgment turns into personal judgment. And they say, you know, I notice there's a sin in your life. I notice this is what you've been doing. Like, why don't you love God? Enough? Or are, do you really think you're actually saved? Or whatever other kind of judgment you can make about this person. When your righteous judgment when your right judgment of the sin turns into your personal opinion about the person, that's where uh, things get messy and people get upset and there turns into tension and actually disunity. Because you might make a personal judgment mixed with a right judgment, but your personal judgment can very well be wrong. And so even if your right judgment's right and your personal judgment's wrong, it kind of disqualifies everything you're saying because you're saying, well, here's a right judgment, but also here's a wrong judgment with it. And that person's not even going to really listen to you anymore because they're going to say, no, that's not true. What, like, what are you saying right now? Like, okay, yes, I, maybe I can see the, this part, but like, what, like, what else are you saying? And it's just going to get messy and it's going to get weird and it can create a lot of division and um, a lot of other problems can spring up. And that's where you get the word like, well, why are you judging me? Like, and these things get thrown around, like, who are you to judge me? And people can actually be feeling really condemned in those moments because they feel as if someone is, um, they're recognizing that someone's actually making incorrect judgments about them. But when you go to someone with correct judgment and say, hey, I've noticed this sin in your life. I've noticed, you know, I just heard you gossip a lot and I don't know why, you know, that's between you and the Lord, but I just wanted to say, I am noticing it. Here's what the Bible says about it. Have an explanation for what you're pointing out to them. And then in whatever way you feel called to be a good friend, be a good friend, be a good brother or sister in Christ. You can ask that person questions. You can say, do you believe that what you're doing is gossip? Or you can say, do you know that this is gossip? Did you know gossip was a sin? Like just start to ask questions and get to those deeper roots because there are typically deeper roots there. Now you don't understand those in your own strength, but you can start to ask questions to start to help this person begin to realize why they're doing this sin, 
what the sin is, like what is the deeper root behind the symptom? What's the deeper root behind what they're doing on the outward, what they're saying, what, how they're acting, right? What is their deeper? And um, just say, look, I don't know. Like, be so honest. There's humility in saying, I don't know, but I'm willing to pray with you and pray about this and pray that the Lord reveal to you, you know, why this is going on or pray for strength that you can overcome this for whatever reason. That is being a good friend. That is being gentle and sweet and caring about this person and not making your own judgments and throwing your own stuff in there. Now, that doesn't mean you can't give this person advice and guidance and wise counsel because we're also called to do that. You can say maybe, you know, the Bible says that we're called to be slow to speak. You know, maybe you can practice being slower to speak. Maybe before you say something, something that really worked for me was to think about what you had to say and go through the lens of, is this good? Is this truthful? Is this necessary? Is this right? Is this whatever else? And then if all those things are good, then go ahead and say it. But if it's not, then don't. Like, that's just a really silly example about gossip. But I'm just saying like, if, the, if you've walked through a sin that you notice in someone else's life, don't be shy to give advice about things that have worked for you. Don't be shy to give other biblical wisdom in that person's life. But just be cautious of making your own personal judgments and not taking up this place of humility saying, I'm not God. I really don't understand everything, but as a sister or as a brother in Christ, I'm going to be there for you in the best way that I can based on what I know from the Bible, because this is where right judgments come from. And plus, God knows what's going on in the lives of people who you notice sin. If you start really paying close attention, you're going to notice different kinds of shortcomings in everybody. So be a good friend, do the biblical thing and bring it to that person. That is just one example, but there's countless examples that the Bible talks about, about um, confronting a believer about their sin. So it's not unbiblical to confront a believer, to talk to a believer, to share with a believer about their sin or even an unbeliever, right? It's, it's different because they don't know Jesus and they don't have the revelation of who God is. So there's so much more there, but even acknowledging the sin in someone's life or pointing out what sin is can really help someone understand that they are in need of a savior and bring them to the cross. Now that needs discernment and that needs all sorts of other things that we're not gonna talk about in this video, but just in general, being made aware of sin is a good thing. And if you are one of these people <laughs> that someone has come to you and told you something in your life, has pointed out, hey, friend, like I've noticed this is maybe a sin that you've been doing or something um, that I've, a pattern I've noticed in your life that here's what the Bible has to say about it. Be so glad. It's humbling, humbly accepting correction is exactly where you need to be in your walk with God. It is a beautiful, amazing, wonderful thing to have people in your life that are willing to tell you the truth, that are willing to point out sin, that are willing to say, hey, I don't even know if you've noticed this, but I've noticed that you've been really quick to speak and the Bible says to be slow to speak. You know, is there a reason? Like, what do you think about that? What has God been teaching you about that, right? To have people in your life that'll point out different things that they notice in a righteous, right, gentle way is a blessing. And not everyone's gonna do it right. You know, sometimes people might say or or cross a line or maybe do it, uh, say stuff in a way that you maybe preferred them say a different thing, whatever. Have forgiveness, you know? It's not that it doesn't matter. It's just that we're not always gonna get it right. And again, there are ways to, to do it. And like I said, I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of judging people in the wrong way, but it came out of a place of love. Not that it makes it okay, but if there is an are people in your life that are willing to tell you the truth, that are willing to point things out, hold on to those people, cherish those people, and do the same for them as well. Create the environment in your friends, in your friend groups, in your communities, where you want to help each other grow closer to God because that's what happens when you walk out of sin, you grow closer to God. And so it's a good thing. And pray for God, pray for yourself, pray that the Lord would search your heart and your mind and then pray for your friends that God would search their heart and mind and reveal to them truth. Because if there's anyone who knows what's really going on, why you're stuck in a sin, why certain things are the way that they are, why you're doing or saying certain things, it's God. Psalm 139 verse 23 through 24 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, 
and lead me in the way everlasting. And so this is a prayer to God that is a good prayer to pray. It's saying, know my heart, search me, try me, know my thoughts, see if there's any grievous way, any wrong way in me, and then lead me in the way of everlasting. Lead me in the opposite direction of whatever that is, because if there's a grievous way, if there's a sinful way in me, I wanna go the opposite. And so, and that is the way of everlasting, the way of Jesus, the way we're called to live. So I hope this video kind of helped you understand more about judgment, even freed you up um, about where your responsibility is to um, make judgments on people. There is um, a responsibility on us as believers to confront people about sin um, and to bring a right judgment, but there's freedom in knowing that we don't have to have it all figured out and that we don't have to start um, understanding why these people do the things they do and we don't have to search people's hearts because God is the one to do it. And when we start getting into our own understanding of situations, pride comes and um, problems come. But when we take a humble step back and we say, look, this is what I've noticed based on what the Bible says. And this is advice I can give you based on what the Bible says. And this is what God, God has taught me before when I have also walked in this. And you start to become a good friend to somebody, a good brother or sister and help them walk out of that. That's where freedom is found. That's where you're actually bonded together. The closest people in my life are people who were not afraid to tell me the truth, are people who would come to me and say, hey, let's talk about this. Hey, Becky, I love you. Why, why is this going on? What is this? And those are the people that I trust. Those are the people that I trust to know and to hear about my life and to tell me the truth in a loving, gentle way and not to make personal judgments about me in their own understanding, but to always point me back to the Bible, always point me back to the truth. And it's been the biggest blessing in my life, a huge blessing in my walk with God. And they would say the same vice versa. I hope this helped. I hope this spoke. I hope this gave some direction and some like insight and beauty and, and the ability to judge rightly with, with friends and with people in our life, um, but also a kind of warning or a understanding against wrong judgment, against judgment where you're noticing a, a speck in someone's eye but not noticing the plank in your own, where you're starting to make false judgments um, that you're not called to make. So if you guys like this video, feel free to subscribe and like it and stick around, watch some other videos I've made, and I will see you guys next week.